How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in this video we're going to be covering essential settings, features and an overall checklist of all things in which you should do on a gaming PC whether you've just built the machine and booted into Windows for the first time or if you're on a machine that is years old. These are things in which you should regularly check up to ensure that they are running on your PC to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible at all times. To ensure that you are running on your PC or laptop regardless of how old, new, high or low end your machine is. And as always if you do enjoy this video and your results please do consider leaving a like and a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm as it does help me out tremendously. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more water. To mark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. Jumping straight on into the list, we're first of all going to be starting off with your monitor. Whether this is completely basic or high refresh rate, you want to ensure that you're getting the most out of your monitor as possible. So to start off before we do anything, take a look at your monitor, turn it round and find the model number for this as you want to do a quick Google search for the specs if you don't already know them. The specs you want to keep an eye out for are the maximum resolution and the maximum refresh rate. With that information, take yourself to your Windows PC, right click on the desktop and head into display settings. Inside of the display section, First of all, click on the monitor in which you're going to be changing these settings for. For me, that's my main monitor, which is monitor 2. Once you've then selected the monitor, proceed to scroll all the way down to the bottom to Advanced Display Settings. With inside of here, you should be able to find the refresh rate which your monitor has been set to. In nearly all cases, you'll want to have this set as high as possible, and more often than not, when people buy their first high refresh rate monitor, they don't actually realise typically most of the time you'll have to come in and manually set this up yourself, otherwise it will nearly always still be running at 60Hz. With that then completed, select Back. Inside of the main display settings, proceed to scroll down, go to display resolution, go to the drop down menu and select the highest resolution available with inside of here. For me that's 3840 by 2160. But this is why I recommended you look at your monitor specs beforehand, because if your monitor specs don't match up with the maximum settings allowed with inside of Windows, you could be using an incompatible cable. Let's say that you have a monitor like mine, it's a 4K 144Hz monitor, but if I had this plugged in via a HDMI 2.0 cable, I would only see the option for 4K and only at 60Hz maximum. I would actually need to be using the DisplayPort 1.4 cable which came with the monitor to get the full speed and full resolution. Next up for the basic settings is RAM. There are so many common issues people make with their RAM. First up is how many RAM sticks are actually installed to your PC or laptop. The easiest way to find this out is by selecting Control, Shift, Escape on your keyboard and this will open up Task Manager. Head to the Performance tab at the top, inside of here, click on memory, go to the bottom right hand side, you'll then see slots used. If you're using two out of four, that's great. If you're using four out of four, that's also fine. But if you're using one out of four, one out of two, or three out of four, those are odd amounts of RAM sticks. In these scenarios, you would either want to add an additional RAM stick or take one away. To rewind back time about eight years ago, I was using a PC where I had 24 gig of RAM installed. Those were three eight gigabyte sticks. After a few months, I actually realized by removing one of the eight gigabyte sticks and only using two, giving me 16 gig of RAM, I was actually able to achieve way higher performance with inside of my games because I was then running in dual channel memory mode. Having the third additional RAM stick was giving me more RAM, but it was kicking my system to run in single channel memory mode, which was restricting my overall memory bandwidth by 50%. If you've bought a relatively budget oriented laptop or PC, it will typically only come with one memory stick. You can see an incredible performance uplift by making a small investment to an additional RAM stick for that PC as it will typically come with quite cheap memory anyway. For laptops, consult your manual on how to take the back cover off and see where the RAM is, take a look at the model number and speed of the RAM, input that information into something like Amazon or Google, shop around and find an identical RAM stick and purchase one. For desktop users, locate your RAM sticks, find the white sticker where this will then have the specs and speed rated on it and find an identical RAM stick to be safe and add that to your your PC. Next up is where you have your RAM slots installed to. This is typically only going to be for motherboards that are using four DIMM slots available like this one here. Typically if you're using only two sticks with a motherboard such as this, you'll always want to have a gap between the memory slots being used and you'll always want to use the two memory slots further away from the CPU. Here's an example of how most people install RAM. They'll install them into slots one and two, but you should actually be installing your first two sticks into two and four because these are running alternate memory channels and we're only going to be using one of those channels so you want them 
to run properly. Next up, jumping into the BIOS settings for RAM, you always want to make sure that you have your XMP or DOCP memory profile active. For 99% of you watching this video, this should be completely fine and easy to do. Just simply enable the setting in the BIOS and hit save. For those of you running on an AMD Ryzen CPU, you'll always want to try and make sure that you are setting your F clock or FCLK in your BIOS settings to half of your memory speed. So if you had a memory kit rated for 3200 megahertz, you've just enabled your XMP profile, head over to the F clock and set this to 1600, which is half of 3200. Moving off of memory, we can now look at custom fan curves, which are built into the PC in which you can have complete control over to lower your temperatures. For this, you'll typically have to go to the main settings of the BIOS page, where you should see some information regarding fans with inside of it or monitoring. Click on the option inside of your motherboard. You'll typically be bought a graph that looks similar to this. You'll then have all the individual fans which you can set individual profiles for, or there's typically a select all option where you can then adjust the fan curve for speed and temperature at certain points. So if I want my PC to be running at 75% fan speed at 70 degrees, I can just simply drag the slider up to here, have a fan curve that looks like this, apply all settings, then my PC will be using 70% fan speed at 70 degrees. You can set this more aggressively if you wish to do so and fine tune this for your PC, but that is how to do it. Back on the desktop now for both Intel and Ryzen users, it's incredible important to ensure that you are running on the latest chipset drivers for your motherboard and CPU. This is especially important to ensure that you have all necessary security updates so your system stays secure, but also performance increases too. For AMD Ryzen users, head to the link in the description down below or just simply search for amd.com slash support. On this page, you can typically just download and install the auto detect if you wish to do so, but if you would like to manually search for your driver, inside of the drop down menu, head to chipsets, socket AM4, then we need to find out which motherboard chipset we have. Easiest way to do this is to navigate to the Windows button, type in DX Diag, then run this. After a few short moments, you want to navigate down to your system manufacturer and system model. For me, I have an MSI motherboard and the model for this is MS7D13. With the model number, we're going to do a quick Google search. And for me, that model number is ms dash 7D13. You'll more than likely then get a result for your motherboard, and for me, that's an MPG B550 Unify. So that's the B550 chipset. With that information, go back to the chipsets page. I'm going to select B550, submit. With that done, select your operating system, then find the AMD chipset drivers, download. And after a short period of time, you should then have most of the options available with inside of the driver, select any and all of them, then hit install. Next up are GPU drivers. For either AMD, Intel or Nvidia, it's important to ensure that you are running on the latest updates for these for the most recent security fixes and performance patches. All three platforms can be found linked in the description down below. If you're not entirely sure which GPU you're using, hit control, shift and escape on your keyboard once again. Inside of task manager this time, go to performance, scroll all the way down to the bottom, find GPU 0 or GPU 1. Look in the top right hand side where you can then see the make and model of the GPU you are using. I have an NVIDIA GeForce card on this PC so I'm going to proceed to scroll down inside of my link, input my information so it's an RTX 30 series. I'm using Windows 10, proceed to scroll down and I'm then going to download the latest GeForce game ready driver, hit get download. With the latest GPU drivers then installed to your system, it's important that we ensure that we are using some of the new features that are available. If you're looking for a phenomenal FPS boost on NVIDIA cards and most AMD, they have recently just released driver level features such as NVIDIA image scaling or NIS and AMD's Radeon Super Resolution or RSR technology similar to DLSS and FSR with minimal visual loss and phenomenal FPS improvements. For NVIDIA users, right click on the desktop, open up NVIDIA control panel. Head up to adjust image settings with preview in the top left. Ensure that use advanced 3D image settings has been selected, then select apply. With that done, head over to manage 3D settings on the left, go to global settings, image scaling, go to the drop down menu, switch this to on, set overlay indicator to on, and the sharpen value can be set to anything you wish to do so. I personally like 20%. Select OK, select Apply, boot into any game of your choice, head over to the resolution settings, then just simply turn down the resolution by one setting all the way down to the bottom. Any resolution you set with inside of your game that's lower than your monitor's native resolution, you'll then see NIS turn to green, be used and see a phenomenal FPS improvement. For those of you running on an AMD GPU, go inside of your graphics control panel, head over to the gaming tab, global graphics, but inside of here enable Radeon Super Resolution. Once that's then enabled, boot into any of your favourite games, change your in-game resolution, resolution to 1 or any lower resolution than your monitor's native resolution, select Alt and R on your keyboard to see if RSR is now active and being used with the green tick, and you're successfully then using RSR and will see a phenomenal FPS improvement from doing so. If you're using a PC that is constantly getting micro stuttering, Windows crashes, errors, no matter how much you've tried you're convinced there is something bugged with your operating system, well you could be in luck. As of about a year ago, Windows can actually be completely reset without having to re-download it via USB and using installation media. You can actually just do a Windows Cloud reset. 
This could be phenomenal because it allows you to reinstall Windows completely fresh, fixing any potential issues, errors, and giving you the most optimal performance possible from a completely fresh Windows install. But before doing this, as always, it's recommended to make sure that you back up any important data because the last thing we want to do is lose anything. If you would like to go ahead with a Windows Cloud reset, navigate to the bottom left hand side, type reset, then select reset this PC. Inside of these options, you'll then want to navigate up to the top to reset this PC, get started. Inside of here, you'll then have the option if you wish to remove your apps, but keep your personal files or remove everything. You'll then be given the option if you wish to use local media or do a Windows cloud download. Select the cloud option, follow all of the prompts, run through this, and in no time you'll be running on a completely fresh installation of Windows without having to reinstall anything. That leads us onto game settings in which you should look out for and adjust in nearly all games in which you play for a phenomenal FPS improvement without losing any visuals or even in some cases making the game look nicer. First of all, inside of any game settings menu, if there are textures available, set the textures to match your system specs. So if you're using a low-end system, go with low, medium end, go with medium, high-end systems, go with high. Next up is shadows. I would recommend always using the medium preset for this or the low preset as shadows will take a ton of FPS away without adding much to the experience. If you have the options for motion blur and depth of field, switch both of these off. Post process or post effects are been nearly always set to the lowest option or off entirely. And if you have a render resolution scale, I would nearly always have this set to 1, 1.0 or 100%. There's a very basic in-game settings. Consider checking out the channel as we cover most popular titles on the channel for extensive FPS improvement guides. Next up are auto updates. This could be GPU drivers, Steam games, Steam updates or even Windows updates. The problem with this is a resource heavy application or playing a game, these updates could be being applied in the background or being downloaded or significant drops in performance. For game launches and applications, this doesn't just go for Steam. If you use the Epic Games launcher, if you're using Battle.net, Origin, Ubisoft or any other game launchers, for Steam you'll navigate to the top left to Steam, click the button, head down to setting. Inside of here you'll go down to downloads, go to the downloads restrictions and ensure that you have the option for allow downloads during gameplay to be disabled. And for a potential download speed increase in Steam, I would always recommend hitting clear download cache OK. Next up are applications to monitor your system specs, temperatures, power draw and other important statistics which can help you identify potential issues with your system or just help you gather more knowledge about the system in which you're running on alongside power draw or other statistics which may help you narrow down why you're experiencing the problem and what you can do with that. The first application I like to use for this is Hardware Info 64. Use the link in the description below or do a quick Google search. Once inside of the web page, head to the installer, head to the free download, click on any of the links. Once inside of here, proceed to scroll down, select the installer once again, then select open, select next, agree, next, 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 and install. Select launch hardware info, then select finish. With inside of the main screen, select sensors only, then select start. You'll then see a ton of information on your system specs, power draw, voltages, and usage. You don't have to pay attention to about 90% of the stuff within side of here if you don't know what it is. Some of the main things I would recommend keeping an eye on though is to scroll down until you find these small chips in the program. These identify different components. This component is my CPU so I'm going to expand this. I'm then going to proceed to scroll down. This is my motherboard so I'll expand this and towards the bottom I have my GPU which is already expanded. The GPU is a fantastic thing to monitor especially when playing games. If you have a particular game that crashes after a while of playing I'd recommend booting that now, having this program open and keeping an eye on things such as the GPU temperature, memory junction temperature, and hotspot temperature. Your numbers are going to be completely different from mine, it depends on your room temperature and the specs in which you are using. The main thing you want to do though is keep an eye on them compared to the actual spec. If my GPU was sat at 90 or 100 degrees, that could be a clear indication I have an issue. I can then see how much the CPU package power is. Right now it's pulling in 73 watts and my main CPU temperature has been reported at 46 with a maximum of 48.8. Again, these numbers may not mean much to you, but it's a fantastic tool to have in your back pocket if you do run into any potential issues on your system. For any of you that are using your PC or laptop to game, whether it's Sims, Rocket League, incredibly high FPS esports titles, every single person that games on their PC should have MSI Afterburner installed. We're only going to be using it for its monitoring capabilities and its custom fan control for the GPU to keep the GPU running cooler and adapt it to your use. Usage. Once again, use Google or the link down below to find MSI Afterburner, then select Download Afterburner. Halfway through the setup, you'll then get a setup for Revitune's statistics server. I would recommend also installing this. MSI may look different on your screen than it does on mine, but this is because I'm using a different skin. To change and set a custom fan speed, navigate down to the settings cog, 
head to fan at the top, then ensure that enable user defined software automatic control has been selected. We have temperature at the bottom and fan speed on the left hand side. So for me currently on my fan curve, I have 0% usage until 20 degrees. At 30 degrees, I'm using 30% of my fans. At 50 degrees, I'm using 50% of my fans. And at 65 degrees, I'm using 100%. Take some time to set this up however you wish to do so. Do bear in mind though that if you are going to be setting 70 or 100% fan speed, you might notice that your GPU becomes incredibly loud. This is completely fine, don't panic, it won't damage itself, it's completely running within spec and this is normal. Select apply, select OK. Go to save on the right hand side, click this, then select profile one. If you would like to then have the custom fan curve applied every single time you boot your PC so you never have to worry about it again, first of all navigate and find the windows button inside of MSI, select this. Then go to the settings cog again, go to general, find the options for start with windows and start minimized, check both of them, select apply, and you're then good to go. As long as MSI is open in the background, your custom GPU fan curve has now been applied. You can also monitor your GPU clock, memory clock, temperature, and millivolt usage inside of MSI Afterburner at any time. And there you guys have it. If you have any other essential tips, tricks, or settings you always make sure are set on your PC or have any recommendations, let me know in that comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this style of video and wish to see how to get more out of your machine without having to spend a penny, consider checking out the two videos on screen now.